So this is a part two to my last video. I don't want to go into my last video because it'll waste time. So you have to go see the other one. This is part two. So this is um, regarding about how the Scots are the chosen people, I mean, after the resurrection. But you know what? Like, don't let that go to people's heads, really, because that's happened throughout the history of God's creation. You know, whether it's certain Jewish sects or it's the Catholic Church and the parishioners that say, we're the first church, we know it all, or the evangelicals, all of you, none of you get it, you know, because you're all in your ego. So do not let the whole chosen people shit go to your head. It's just totally not where, I mean, Jesus does not care about ethnicity. Anyway, um, so this this is the uh, Jonanite church, um, also different spellings without the T, but it's still, it's uh, the Jonanite Grail Church, uh, which incorporated the mystery teaching of St. John the Evangelist in the guise of Lazarus, apparently as a result of a fusion between this ethnic group which the ethnic group is a a, uh, a jewish sect group and elements of a pre-existing druid magi this john and john and nine because how they have it here is it's there's no t but it's still the same thing the jonah nine church developed through a monastic line which became known in celtic britain as the Chaldees, and before they were the Chaldees. I just found this out. The important connection between the Josephine mission and the development of the Coldy fraternity is clearly shown in the drama of the Lost Disciples by George F. Jowett, who states, it is interesting to note that the Bethany group, the Bethany group <laughs> who landed in Britain was never referred to by the British priesthood as Christians, nor even later when the name was in common usage. Just thought that, I just thought I'd add that. Because that's what this all go, goes to. So, um, um, so Chaldees um, is a Gaelic term and it translates to servants of the Lord and certain strangers. I mentioned that at the end of my last video. Um, so we always hear that we need authority in order to keep unity in the church. Yeah, it's part of the problem. Those making the claim usually mean they have the proper theology to which everyone else must conform. However, this kind of authority has done little to heal the divisions in the body of Christ and for the most part has led to new ones. Um, I'll go more into the, the history of the Coldies in a different, I'm just doing sort of an overview. They were a very disciplined disciplined uh monk-like group that didn't call themselves christians but they had received the word from after the after uh the resurrection of jesus uh uh, John's theology is not about this kind of authority like what the Catholic Church does rather than calling for one and only one and only doctrine and law to which way you have to conform or um, the Eastern Orthodox wing of the Christian Church is based on this kind of theology and we might gain some guidance in examining how they do it that is not to say we should all become Greek, Greek Orthodox no they have as many po political hang-ups as we do. However, when the Eastern and Western churches split in 1054, we lost some valuable balance. The Western church operates in the context of Roman law that stresses right belief and conduct. And yet, look at the Roman church doesn't even know what the, it doesn't even know how to treat children. The Eastern Church emphasizes Greek philosophy that offers the flexibility of learned conversation. Yet, yeah, don't take that too far, because you, then you go off into your, you know, higher educated. Don't mix higher education in with God. But they have a point. There has to be some balance here. In the fact, the in fact, the split was primarily primarily an objection to the Pope and the Pope's abuse of power in arbitrarily changing ancient doctrine forcing priests to give up their wives, preventing the use of common language in literature, in liter, literature and Bible, inventing doctrines such as purgatory and other such issues that constantly have surfaced in Western church history. Yes, this is what I've been saying for a long time. 
Uh, the Orthodox emphasizes John's um, in uh, carnation theology. Their basic tenet is the divine becomes human so the human can become divine. Unity depends on the community worshiping together even though they do not agree on all doctrine and practice because worship enables people to share the Holy Spirit. Revelation involves an experience of the living God often called his energy rather than the knowledge of his being called his, uh, called his essence. Um, the purpose of creation is not then to know who God is, but to commune with him as Adam and Eve once did. I've been saying this. That's what it's about. It's about having the relationship. Um, we are able to do this because Jesus gives us the means to live again in God's image. When he tasted death as a human being, an exchange of divine and human qualities takes place, overcoming our separation. To be truly human is to become holy people rather than believe correct doctrine. Oh, I so, so, so agree. They do not harp on sin as much as we do, preferring to focus on the benefits of salvation. They talk about the imperfections of life and the sorrows of this world that Jesus' death heals. Part, uh, participation, which is in quotes, is a big word. God participates in our lives so we can participate in his. We become holy people by living in a holy community. Sacraments are mysteries through which God participates in our lives. Baptism is not so much for forgiveness um, of sin as the promise that we can live in the resurrection life now. The Eucharist is sharing a meal. I've been saying this, and yet the Catholic Church turned it into this. No, we actually turn the bread into Christ's body. Well, he did not want you to eat his body. Yet then you say that to him, and they say, no, that we, just, we know it's the Spirit. Then why do you say you literally, because they say that whole thing they do turns it in. Yeah, they, they, they don't ever get it right. It's I, unbelievable to me. Yeah, of course, they're the biggest church, though. That's what God said would happen. Everybody would be on the wrong road. Uh, the Eucharist is sharing a meal with God. Yeah, that's what the Last Supper was. Praying for each other is the basic form of love because cause all of Jesus' life was about how to receive the Spirit. What he was always, it wasn't just at the Last Supper. Uh, praying for each other is the basic form of love because it makes other people's sorrows our own, a caring that naturally leads to helpful action. Theoretically, the Eastern Church balances the radical individualism that is damaging Western society and churches with a realistic appreciation of community. We find genuine liberty by working toward a common historical or social goal. John's way is too often absent in the Western church that emphasizes individuals coming to church for their personal satisfaction and, of course, leaving it if they are not gratified. There is no loyalty to any kind of community, whether societal, church, or family. So basically, the Grail Church, okay, the, Scotland was Caledonia in the Bible. They go all the way back like 2,000 years. So Jesus was crucified like 33 or 37 AD, I can't remember which. Um, Christian church goes in Scotland, Kel, or goes all the way back to St. John, the apostle, and 200 AD. Um, some of the people that fled after they crucified Jesus, that because they went on then to persecute Jesus as followers, they fled to, and, and found refuge in, in Britain and Scotland. Um, a British apostle connection appears to be further supported in the Declaration of a Broth, signed by the Scottish nobles at, um, in Scotland in 1320. It was sent to the Pope, John uh, the 22nd, in France as a declaration of Scottish national freedom. Within this declaration, as translated from the original Latin by the Lord Cooper of Colross, we find the following an interesting assertion. Within this, our realm, there have reigned 113 kings of our native royal dynasty and not one of them an alien birth. If proof be needed of the quality and worth of our people, it shines forth for all to see in that we are the King of Kings, our Lord Jesus Christ after his passion and resurrection, chose us almost to be first. The Scots were the chosen ones after the resurrection. 